<clears throat> All right, we're back. Welcome to the Zero to 60 podcast on the Believe Network. I'm your host, Matt McChesney. We are waiting on Coach Jason Brown, uh, Coach JB from the Coach JB Show, to join us here to talk about Shador Sanders and quarterback play and tough quarterback stuff. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to get started on this now. Coach JB will join us as we go. Uh Everything here is brought to you by uh, our, you know, everything we do at 60, 60 Football Academy, 60 Equipment, uh, dot com, all of that, everything that you see online at 60 Academy on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and also at 60 Equipment on all the same pages, and then also the Zero to 60 podcast. Uh, it's, you know, the Zero to 60 stuff starts today. All the other companies are have been flourishing for years, and, you know, we've helped a lot of kids, both on the college football recruiting path. But now we're also in the equipment business, and the body bag is uh, selling like hotcakes. Broncos just bought a bunch, and we're damn excited about that. So, <clears throat> look, today on the show, we're going to go for about 25, 30 minutes, and we're going to dive deep into Shador Sanders and what's going on at the University of Colorado, how to fix it. And I, I think that the opportunity to have somebody like coach jb on who not only played the position but then also developed so many great players at the position and has done so much for so many people in that community that's why he's coming on so my homeboy's here now we're bringing him on right now hold on to your ass there he is bam the man the myth the legend of, of course smoking a fucking stick my dog what's up coach what's up brother congratulations on launching the show no. Yeah, brother. It's uh, look. Today's a great day. Okay, having you on the show is fantastic. Um, everything we do here, you know, it's here the two o'clock show every day. When do we pull to our best? What happened on first? And there's a reason. Look, what we saw in the Rose Bowl on Saturday. I want to get your opinion. I know you've got time on your show. I really want to get your opinion. I don't know what's going on with you. But, me and Shador Sanders, I mean, is he a first round quarterback here? Is he a first round I think he is. But also, can he, like, can he hold up, bro? Because I'm worried that, you know, he can not this thing over quick. First round, I don't know, man. I, here's the thing about first round quarterbacks nowadays. Um, I think we're, you know, me, Matt. Mediocrity is a new excellence, in my opinion, when it comes to quarterbacks. I think we take everybody in the first round nowadays. It seems like, um, but I mean, if you look at the history of things, later round guys are having more success than early round guys as of the last probably ten years. Um, not even going back to Brady, just talking about other guys that just, you know, guys that go kind of unheralded in college. Uh, you know, of course, Josh Allen went high, but he went to Wyoming. No other D1 school even offered him out of JUCO right here in California. Nice. Guys that go under the radar, blow up later. And and first round thing to me is like a five-star kid in high school. Uh, and like there's more two and three-star kids that are actually in the NFL than five-star kids. So I, I don't know. I look at it in a different I, out of a different eye, I guess. I see a guy that has impressed me. Um, you were high on him. I wasn't coming from, you know, HBCU. I wanted to see if he could hang with the the O-line, D-line, the rigor of, uh, of a Power 5 conference like he has. And I've been impressed, to be honest. Uh, I've seen some things that he's done as far as ball accuracy, where he throws the ball low on a dig route uh, to keep a guy from getting his head cleared off which is big to a quarterback guy. People don't really look at it that way. People think he's inaccurate uh, when he's really accurate because he threw the ball low for the receiver to slide and get it down away from the safety coming down. Like, those are little things that I look at, and so are GMs, of course. Um, but then there's things that I see in the pocket where he's a tweener to me, meaning he – He's not a freak like his daddy. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not Kyler Murray. He's adequate enough with his feet to get out the pocket, which I wish Colorado would sprint him out more and save him and keep him upright. But at the same time, he's not a freak, but he's not he's not a, a sitting you know a, a, a sitting duck either. But he doesn't he doesn't have a cannon. He doesn't have big time big time attributes. But he's he's really good. Like I. 
he's a tweener to me, but can he be the guy that you and I talk about on my show every day? The guy that the Taylor Heineke's of the world that nobody thought would be playing, and now he's starting again. Um, can he be a guy like that? That's because he's you know his daddy's an NFL pedigree guy that's gonna be he's gonna be around football people, the greatest football minds in football because of who his dad knows. He'll be around guys you know like look at the guys he's around. Um, what I'm I'm drawing a blank, but what's my guy that's helping Dion out? Uh, Zimmer. I mean you're gonna be Zimmer and Mike Zimmer, NFL guys, Matt, NFL guys. So, I think he could do, you know, I think he'll be all right. But I don't know if he's a big-time NFL guy, but I think he'll, you know, he's going to definitely go. And, and, and from that point on, you know, can he supersede or exceed um, expectations? Or is he going to fall in the, you know, the ones that everyone wants to see him fail? Because, you know, that's the majority. They want to see you and I fail. They want to see guys like him fail. That's what this social media has done to society, and especially athletes. We're either the goat or the hero. I don't know if you saw this yesterday, Matt, but the running back, I believe, for the Eagles, or one of these teams, I forgot who. Yeah, the Eagles, um, is DMing haters at halftime. Because yeah. a hater, a ha- yeah, a Gainwell, Gainwell, the running back, that a hater hit him up and was like, why don't you hold on to the ball, like, Sorry ass and and game one at halftime is like eat a dick duh, 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 duh. and I'm like we become like so dependent on social media. like we're we're responding to haters at halftime and you're an NFL running back so what? so my, my oh, hey, I don't know man no. you, you can't you can't respond to comments if you're a player oh no that's that's the beauty of posting on social media. Is you can talk shit as much as you want. That's my post. So, look, I, I would definitely be encouraging game well. Shut the fuck up, number one. Hey, so, all right. The door's got things to fix. So I think he comes back for another year. I think Dion fixes the offensive line problem by throwing money at him and getting guys in the position. Um, what do you want to see from Shakur? He's a tweener. Can he bulk up, or is that a hype thing? And then, what kind of system do you want to see in bro? I'm not saying the Coach Lewis system is bad, but I am saying that I wonder what Shakur would look like because he emulates Tom Brady so much. I wonder what he would look like in a two-back power set, heavy play action, you know, throwing the ball to specific points, proper football, moving the pocket. I want to get your thoughts. Who he reminds me of right now, if I were to equate him with an NFL guy, there's it's not even close in my opinion. It is Geno Smith to a T. He is Geno Smith. He, he sits in the pocket. He can sit in the pocket. Give him a few wideouts like Geno has. Give him some protection with some NFL schematics. Uh, you know, float the tight end across. Do some things on offensive line purposes, like let's slide it away or let's sprint it away. Let's float the tight end across and pick out the end for him. Boot naked him. Get him on the edge. Use that, you know, athleticism to at least get on half roll. We used to run, you know, half half run and shoot type of stuff that Gino and them do in Seattle. Half roll set up behind the tackle tight end. Get you a little pocket right there. Turn it back. He's that guy. I think he's a Geno Smith-looking guy right now, which I think he uh, he emulates him. I think he, sim- he he looks like Geno as much as anybody. I think he can be a guy in that type of system all day long. Um, get the ball out quick. He he could. I I I, I, lo- I love seeing young quarterbacks throw dig routes because we don't see it anymore. Patrick Mahomes won't even throw a dig route in the NFL. We do not throw into the teeth of the coverage anymore in the NFL. Whether the kids don't know the coverage, they don't know what to expect, they don't know, you know, are we getting fire zone, are we dropping DNs, are we dropping nose guards into the mic hole, Mike and cover two. Like, that's what NFL defensive coordinators do, and these quarterbacks seem like they're just mad stifled because of the college tutoring and tutelage they're getting because we want to go fast, run tempo, card it, wristband it instead of actually teach protection, teach coverage, teach 
where a guy goes, where another guy comes. We're not teaching that no more to quarterbacks. And I think Shador being a, 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 you know, a guy like Dion's dad, son, he'll be around. He's been around since he was a, a, a baby. And I think he can only learn and get better. So I think a system like that, Seattle type of system, and, and who knows? Seattle may be the team for him. Uh, we don't know in two years where Geno's at or, you know, what type, what happens to Pete Carroll and all that stuff. But that is a place or a system that I think uh, can, can serve him best. But going in and running Lamar's system, uh, you know, too much RPO, uh, double, triple option in the NFL is not a good uh, a way to stay healthy. And you could ask Lamar, Kyler Murray, Justin Fields, uh, you know, and ask those guys how, how it's worked out for them. So I think I think him being upright in the pocket, like you said, especially if you emulate Tom Brady, I can see him in that type of system because that's what Seattle's doing, what, what Belichick and, this, and New England did for all those years, keep him in the pocket, half roll Brady, keep him in there and, and get the ball out quick, take some shots to some guys, go get your Randy Moss, which they have Metcalf in Seattle, something like that, I, I guess, is just what I'm equating them to. Well, they're trying to fix the trend with it right now, brother. You're going to like this. The Colorado Buffalo just made a commitment from a Juco offensive tackle named Isaiah Walker, who's, uh, yeah, two years eligible. He's about 6'5", 290 pounder from Miami, Florida. They'll be committed to Colorado. So they're already trying to fix the problem of the alignment issue. Let me ask you this, folks. The, the Juco system has been so overrun because of the Juco. Guys, if you can look out at you, so you can get better art if I want to You think that that is one of the main problems with inability to play at the top? You don't really have to play at the top. You don't really have to play at the top. You don't really have to play at the top. not fun. The transfer portal can be rather fun for guys if they, if they have quote unquote good tape. Um, I think I know how you do it. Let everybody else know how you stand up as you go for the world. And just yeah, here's the thing. Juco is imploding in front of our very eyes. I, I get calls every day from Juco coaches, and they're just like, JB, you called it two years ago, and it's happening. Compton, Compton College here in L.A. has forfeited four football games this year alone already. Fort Scott Community College in Kansas folded their program, which was in our league. That's the home, By the way, that's the home of Jason Pierre-Paul. Levante David, and I can go on and on. They have dropped football forever. Juco is, is, can't sustain because they don't have resources to sustain without football. And football keeps the lights on in these smaller community colleges systems. So if you drop football, basically, not only are you going to probably see an uprise in crime in those particular communities because Juco football keeps a lot of kids out the street, which the NCAA, the non-caring assholes of America, failed to realize and won't look at the bigger picture of what it's really impacting. The transfer portal is killing JUCO. It's killing part of high school athletics and football because there's 131 Division One playing schools, uh, Matt. There's 7,500 kids in the portal. Do the math. Even if every, even if 131 schools took two players each. You're still at 7,500 kids in the portal. Yep. What it's doing. So what's it, what the impact is, Matt, the kid from Alabama that gets kicked out or wants to play and just transfers out, instead of looking down at Juco, which is beneath them now, they sit in a portal, wait around to get plucked out because they're enabled and they need instant gratification. They want to get their dick sucked and tell how good they are. They'll sit in a portal instead of go grind at a juco toughen your skin go get go get motherfuck for a few years with three cots and a, three hots in a cot and then go back division one hungrier than you were before when you left it instead that we've enabled them and made them so soft that they can sit in a portal stay in class by the way and sit there and not have to do anything. Not get out of there. Get out of your comfort zone, Matt. Go go to JUCO and build your ass some tough skin. And go back to an Alabama. Go back to a Colorado. And now you're like, shit, this is my shit. 
because the portal kids, if you notice, they come get they get plucked out of there. And if they're any what's any good at all as an old lineman, Matt, you know as well as I do, you should be starting in today's landscape as how bad we are up front. But they're not. They're sitting in a portal, they get out of a portal, and they end up going to be a backup at the second school. So why would you do it? Go Juco, play a year and go back four years and start. It blows my mind, but that is where we are, and that is the current landscape. And like I said on my show before, we didn't have time today to talk to you about it. That's why they don't want me and you, guys like us, coaching in this four-year level, because we actually can gauge the temperature in the room. They do not want that, because they'll never see another player ever go to their school. They'll go to our school. Because we understand the temperature of the climate, the kid, that we're not going to use them as a piece of meat in a meat market like most of these coaches do. And that is why they'll keep guys like ourselves out of this thing. Because at the end of the day, not only are we ass kickers, we're recruiters, and we love the kids. And they, they don't want that. Because you don't want to get a kid that's a five-star freak who's loved on and can get motherfucked and stay in your program. That's why I test a lot of things. That's why I give Dion a lot of credit for keeping the Fleming kid there, even though he didn't play him. He told him, you ain't ready, and he beat it. And, and, and I said, this is going to be a great test. If he don't transfer, those kids are bought into the Dion system. And, and he didn't he didn't transfer. He bought in. And I that's the one thing I'm, I'm super proud of by seeing Dion being able to motherfuck somebody, keep them there, and the kid buys in, and don't just leave it as a scapegoat and get out of there. So i like to see that. All right, so uh, last question about the board here. You talk about buying. What do you need to see from this kid in the offseason? Like, not only from him, but what do you want to see from Colorado? Like, I understand that there's a lot of class problems. At the same time, though, there is a lot of substance as well. That's the beauty. So, if you put yourself in mini GM, you're running the franchise, you're running the program, what are you going to say to Shador at his exit meeting? Hopefully, after they win a bowl game, but even if they don't, a pretty successful junior campaign moving into the senior year, a lot of this, uh, from a leadership standpoint, from a development standpoint, and then a team standpoint, where does Coach KB take the home up? All right, so I take a, a book out of, I take a page out of Tom Brady's book, what he told him on a Skype interview, like, put down the Rolls Royces and the jewelry and the watches and the and all the shit, and go be an NFL quarterback. If you want to go be an IG model, do that. If you want to be a big time quarterback, let's get serious. Matt, here's the difference between your position that you played, the position that I played. There is. We don't have that in our job description. We cannot make football secondary as a quarterback. It cannot be a fucking nine-hour day. It can't be an 18-hour day. Quarterback requires 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, all day. Don't shop. Don't close. Open 24-7. That is what the job requirement is of a quarterback. We're not late. We sit in the front. We pass tests with A's. We know protections. We can tell everybody on the field what to do. We also have humility and understand we're getting our ass whipped right now. I need to be better. I got to understand that if our jewelry is getting stolen in the locker room, by the way, second time that it's happened, Maybe I keep the shit at home. So that is the job of a quarterback, a CEO, and a leader. That's what I want to see from Shador. In my, in, this is the thing, Matt. I get what Dion's done. I get what Colorado's doing. It is a social media. That is what they're doing. I think it's been a great ploy. I think year two, not only for Dion, but for his kids, I think they they pro up, and I mean what I mean is, let's get it more business style, let's get more CEO style, 
Now we know we can play with the big boys. We know we can now recruit some folks. Now we have facilities. We have buy-in. Now we have social media backing. Now let's make it a business. Let's turn it into a billion-dollar professional business. And now, Dion, let's start putting kids in the NFL. That is your next step as a head coach. And I want to see Shador pro professionalize himself and pro up. Put down the flashy shit. Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's go get dirty. And let's get this football thing going. Rub some dirt on it instead of show your watch. That's what I want to do. But I'm also the old guy on the on the porch yelling at the cloud. Maybe it's past me. Maybe that's why I don't coach either. So there's both sides. And I'm going to always be honest and keep it real. Who knows? Maybe that's how they, they, that's how they have to operate now. No, that's probably why I don't coach. But... That is what I would want to see is, since you asked. All right, last one. All right, last one. We're here to talk to that quarter. Okay? Do you think that door can be a little error or is he just being a bitch? He has a bit of a bitch. I think a lot of other quarterbacks are going to be a bitch right there. I think the thing with this last one, the Bears have a lot of room that they're running by. At capital speed, the plays. We've never lost the ball years for the only a match of the Elaborate on that a little bit. All right, say it again. I, I missed the first part. You said top one quarterback? No, well, he's a tough guy quarterback. You know, on your show, we always talk about the, the old school guys, the A.K. the Elways, Reno, Stavon, guys that can play a shot, Tim Kelly, and just get up and watch the and, and give it to you for each and I've watched, I've watched him do it this year against CSU. I watched him take shots at the SC and all of that. I watched him, you know, take shots at Arizona State in the game. I watched him take shots against Stanford and Brian Needham. And then I watched him just get annihilated and quit my friends and never quit. Not to matter of fact, how much respect do you have for a kid like that in today's game where it means water down the spot? Yeah, I got mad respect for that. I I got I like how you know the thing. I loved how he popped up for his guy Travis Hunter at, at CSU. I love how he got in there, and people respect that as a quarterback. Um, you know, you take shots, and I've never seen him really bark at the O line. See, I would have barked at the O line. I, I would have grabbed one of the motherfuckers by the face mask or something. But guess what? That O lineman also knew he was fed every week by me. And it wasn't Taco Bell. It was a legitimate dinner at my house. And I took care of those guys on certain days of the year for whatever reason. Buy them a watch. Do whatever I did. I did things like that for my own line. We had a mutual respect. And then when they blew a, a blocking assignment, they felt it. And they were like, and I would cut, man, come on, man. And then they're like, man, JB, my bad. I think Shador has that buy-in from his old line. I've never seen him like, but little and old lineman, which he better never do as a quarterback. Uh, you know, I've never seen him go that route, so I respect that fact. And I think that he does have a tough man mentality. But your question, how far does it go with me, it's everything. Like, it's in our job description, once again, that we are tough. That we play through bruises and sores and, and broken fingers and shit that I've had to play with that people don't understand. People respect it. O line respect it. O line want to block more for you. They they want to go harder for you. So if the leader is out there, then the O line will respect it more. I'll gain respect as a coach. So will the opponent. Contrary to belief, so will the opponent. And and they're gonna know they're gonna have to do a lot more than just hit you a few times in the chest to get you out of that game or to get you plastered or you know uh, flustered. So. I, you know, I think he has it in him. I think he does have it in him. I think seeing his daddy play all those years, I think he's gained that through through osmosis, and I think that he has that gene from Deion Sanders, obviously, uh, that's going to get that. You know, I think he has that in factor. How good he can be is the question. I, I, I think he has all the intangibles that you want to see from a guy. Now we just got to see does the skill set match the mental capacity that he contains every day on the football field. And I don't know. I'm not I'm not there every day, so I don't know what his practice habits are like. I don't know how he is with the kids in, in meetings or, you know, even in little things like study hall or, or on, on, on campus. You know, is your quarterback out here, you know, cat calling girls or is he out here telling the players, hey, dog, we ain't got time for that shit. Like, that's the quarterback you want. 
not the guy that's part of the, the the rest of the guys making a left at the stop sign. We want the quarterback to make a right at the stop sign and be fucking different because it's easy to be average. It's hard to be different. And quarterbacks need to be different to be successful. Easy to be average. Yeah, <laughs> to be different. That's what I did. Notes. You enjoy your day. I'll talk to you in the morning on your show. That is the great Coach JP. Every day on the Coach JP show, YouTube, every day. He's everywhere. That's my man. You're the man. Peace, brother. Peace, brother. All right, so that wraps the first day of zero to 60. We will be back at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, make sure that you ask any questions that you may have on social media. I'd be happy to answer them. Tomorrow we'll have a, a fresh top six topics for you. Uh, and then tomorrow afternoon, another great guest coming up at 2 p.m. Uh, so uh, keep your ear to the ground because we're going to be coming out with as much information as we can. So. Thanks to Coach JB for a great show this afternoon. Thanks for watching, folks, and uh, see you in the morning.